Chapter 7, President Ott's Story. Tea does help, I am quite myself again. Mrs Ott nodded to her husband. Go on dear, tell. Range rummed faintly, faintly on the Star Scout, making even cosier the scene within. About the dining table, the lamb chops occupied their usual places. The tyrants sat atop the table on thumbtacks pushed down to serve as stools, sipping from tiny cups Mrs. Lambchop had fashioned from aluminium foil and nibbling crumbs of her homemade ginger snaps. You will observe, you will have, you will have observed, Lambchops, he said, how greatly we have enjoyed these tasty refreshments. The fact is, Tyra has for some time been totally without fresh food or water fit to drink. We live now only by what tins and bottles we had in store. Mrs. Ott made a face. Pink meat spreads and spinach, and that dreadful fizzola. A bit sweet, yes, said General App. Gives one gas too, but never mind, cried Mrs. Ott. President Ott continued. The cause of our tragedy, lamb chops, was supergrow, an invention of Dr. Epps. Supergrow, Epp promised, would double our crops make them double size, double delicious as well. A great concept, he said. We scientists, said Dr. Epp, dream larger than other men. For three days at the science center, President Ott went on, Epp brewed his super grow. Great smelly vats of it, enough for the whole planet. But then, oh no, Tyron will never forget that fourth day. I myself was strolling through Ups Park how beautiful it was. The trees and grass so green. The sky green, said Arthur. But everything's brown here, not green. A mishap, murmured Dr. Epp, with the super grow. Mishap, barked a general app. The stuff exploded, Epp, all over the place. Well, nobody's perfect. Dr. Epp hung his head. All those huge bat slam chops. President Ott continued, boom, one after another, shattered windows, blew the roof off the science centre, no one hurt, thank goodness, but great clouds of smoke darkening the sky, and then, such dreadful luck, it began to rain, a tremendous rain, mixing with the smoke, falling all over Tyra, into the rivers and onto every field and garden, every bit of greenery. Rising from his thumbtack, he paced back and forth across the table. When the rain stopped, there was no green, none, just brown. Worse, Epp's tests proved that our water was undrinkable and that nowhere on Tyra would anything grow. I broadcast at once to the nation. Do not despair, I said. Tyra will soon recover. Oh, good, Mr. Lamchop said. President Ott shook his head. I lied. Couldn't tell the truth for fear of causing panic, you see. The test showed that, that it would be a year at least before Tyra was green again, and long before that we will have emptied our last tin and our last bottle of Fizzola. He sat down again, covering his face with his hands. So then we, we sent a message into space. Lure some other planet spaceship, we thought. Hold it for ransom, you see. Make them send food and water. Oh, shameful. Underhanded. You will never forgive us, I know. His voice trailed away and there was only the patter of the rain. Close to tears, the lamb chops looked at each other, then at the little people on the tabletop. The tyrant seemed particularly tiny now and brave and nice. You poor dears, Mrs. Lambchop said. There was no need to conquer us. We would help you willingly if we could. The tyrant seemed at first unable to believe their ears. Then, suddenly, their faces shone with joy. Bless you, cried General App. Saved! Mrs. Ott clapped her hands. We are saved! Saved? said Mrs. Lamchop. Of course, said President Ott. Don't you see? Earth spaceships can bring food and water till... Oh, what's wrong? It was Arthur who explained. I'm very sorry, he said, but there's just the Star Cast, the Star Scout. 
Earth hasn't got any other spaceships, and it would take years to build them. The Tyrants gasped. Years, said Dr. Epp. Stanley felt so sad he could hardly speak. And it's no use going for food in the Star Scout, he said. By the time we return from Earth, you'll all be, well, you know, dead, said Mrs. Ott. In the Star Scout, a terrible silence fell. The facts were clear. The cupboards of Tyra would soon be empty, and then all its tiny people would starve to death. To be continued.